So we plan to start operations later this year and that's why it's really important we have this O&M facility ready. It's going to be our home for the next 35 years. It's going to be home to our onshore support teams. That's our planners, our engineers, our health and safety staff. It will allow us to control, monitor and manage the wind farm 24 hours a day and that's extremely important. The warehouse that you're in now, that will store all of the spares, consumers, allow us to transfer them to our service operation vessels right through those doors, straight onto the, the river tine on the, the vessels. It's such an important base for us to start. When offshore wind started to go in from my constituency and also in the northeast, in, on the east coast of Yorkshire, I wasn't sure that sticking stuff in the North Sea was the most obvious way of driving costs down. It's not the most hospitable environment. But we came up with something called Contracts for Difference. Um, it was a scheme, to an auction type system to try and show the lowest price. And from that, we had this remarkable um, reduction for £120 a megawatt hour is what the developers needed in 2015, the first auction we did. By 2019, two auctions later, it had come down to £39.50. We had, in this country and in the northeast of England, transformed the economics of offshore wind from a, an idea that might not be practicable to something which is now being replicated all around the world. So it's just a fantastic story. And of course, Dogger Bank is going to be the, um, the golden example because it's going to become the world's biggest offshore wind farm and it's going to take over from the second and the third and the fourth biggest and you know what they all are? They're all British as well and they're all in our waters and going forward if you look at a map of Europe and you see who has the potential well the UK, the British Isles and I work very closely with my Irish counterpart Eamon Ryan we just have this phenomenal potential. By capturing the enormous wind potential around the British Isles, that uh, our vision is that it should lead us in the 2030s to having a mount, um, uh, amongst the lowest electricity costs of any major economy in Europe. And that harnessed in the right way can help us into other areas we need, such as hydrogen. Uh, which I know Equinor, uh, for instance, uh, uh, along with others, has a great interest in. I think the building is testament to the support of the UK in building the world-class offshore wind industry that the Minister described. It is also testament to the work of Equinor, to SSE and to Vågran. So uh, a world-class wind farm deserves a world-class operations and maintenance base and we now have it. The UK has led, I'm so proud, we had just 7% of our electricity came from renewables in 2010 and under this government it's now well over 40% and we are going further and faster. We're, we're looking to quadruple the amount of offshore wind we have. It's currently around 14 gigawatts. We want 50 gigawatts by 2030. It's a tremendous uh, challenge but we're, we're up for that. We want uh, more solar. We're looking to invest in small modular reactors as well as the gigawatt nuclear um, as we lead the world in uh, cutting our emissions. And uh, your viewers uh, can be proud of the fact that the UK has cut its emissions by more than any other major economy in the world since 1990, any other G7 economy. And we are going to go further, faster. And by doing so, we can actually come out with more competitive energy system. So it's not going to come at our cost. It should at making us more competitive uh, across Europe. It'll allow us to decarbonize industries because offshore wind can be converted into green hydrogen. We're blessed with um, the, 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 the holes from which we took our oil and gas can be filled with CO2 in future. There's a tremendous amount of jobs to come for in the energy sector in the Northeast and Northwest, Scotland and Wales, but perhaps there could be even more jobs created by the energy sector by providing super competitive electricity, hydrogen, carbon capture, and I see us re-industrializing the North and returning the UK to the economic preeminence within Europe that it should rightfully have.
green agenda is very much at the focus of South Tyneside Council, but with regard to having the right skills, the green jobs, this is going to be a huge, huge bonus for us here in the borough. It isn't just about South Tyneside and all of this, it's fantastic for our residents because we want to be able to give those the right skills to access all of these jobs, which we will be working very closely. Um, but it is for the region as well. You know, we are a small borough in South Tyneside, but having Equinor here in this borough is absolutely amazing for us. And economically, you know, this is going to be a huge asset to us moving forward, not just for, you know, this decade, but for decades to come. It's extremely special, and I think today is such a momentous day, um, a momentous occasion for South Tyneside, you know, celebrating the opening of Equinor. As you've just said there, you know, it is the biggest in the world, and I am just so proud to have Equinor here in South Tyneside.